Welcome to EDU AMP. This is the second part of a lesson uh, all about pressure in fluids and depth. And in the last lesson, I covered calculating the pressure in a common liquid at different depths. And also, we did wide state where pressure increases with depth. And now I'm going to focus on investigating what factors affect the upthrust of an object and describe what factors influence floating and sinking. So, um, here we were last lesson, and this is the next part I want to do. Now, this is a practical that I would do, I do quite often in the lab actually, and it shows you up thrust quite well. So what I use is these are loads of, well, it could be a, a cylinder. Normally I use 100 grams uh, slotted masses. So each of these is a little slotted mass. And in a lab, you get out a beaker. And what you do then is you put liquid in the beaker. And here's going to be my liquid. And what you do then is, is you pop in your 100 gram masses and you put them into the liquid, as you can see just here. And there they are slotted nicely. Now, what you do that is, you then attach on the top this thing, which is called a Newton meter or a force meter. And what that does, it records the weight of the masses. So first of all, you do it um, in air, you know, it, Normally outside, you can get your 100 gram masses like this. Then you attach on your Newton meter and you can get a reading. But then what you do is you put it in a beaker of water. And again, what you do is record the force reading on this Newton meter here. Um, but what you do is you put it into different depths in the water, just like this. OK, so first of all, we have a small depth, record the reading and make the depth get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. As you can see practically here, the whole of the cylinders in the water. And then what you do is you record a table where you have got the D in centimeters going down here, one reading, and then you have your force, which is then going to be in Newton's over here on the right. Um, and you'll see a lot in the exams, then they can start asking you then to plot graphs. Now, if you go into the right-hand corner here, start looking at the graphs you get hold of, um, you then can plot a graph of force in your y-axis, and you always label the units against distance on the x-axis in centimetres. And if you plot your results, you get something like this. And then what we do is we do draw lines of best fit going through, say, line going through this here. Now, what they're going to ask you in GCSE examination questions is to spot a pattern to match the matter, right conclusion. And we can quite see, clearly see here, as that D goes up, increases, either depth increases, can you see the force goes down? Now, why does that happen? Well, there must be in the case, if you look at the forces associated with this, is you have got this acting downwards. Therefore, you've got a force of gravity acting down, which gives it weight. Well, what is happening is the water is starting to push up. And we call this push up is called the up thrust. And how much up thrust you have, it really depends on how much of the water, so how deep you are in the water. Therefore, if you go further and further down, increase the D, the up thrust is going to start to increase, gets bigger and bigger. And that's why the force goes down. Now, I can really help you understand this by using this really good simulation, uh, which I've got just here. So let's case thinking here. Here's going to be a block of wood and here's going to be oh, looks like a brick to me. Now, these two have exactly the same volume. But in the case of the brick, the density is going to be a lot, lot higher because it's brick and this is going to be wood. Density of brick is higher than density of wood. Hence, this one is going to be for that size is going to be two kilograms. This is going to be 10 kilograms. Then that's going to give a weight. Now, what they're doing is using G, well, gravity is 9.8. Hence, they give a weight of this one is 19.6. And this one, you've got a weight of 98 newtons. Here I've got a load of water. Now, if I take my wood and drop it boom, and put it in the water, we know that wood's going to float. Now, why is the wood floating? Well, the reason why the wood's floating is you've got a weight acting down of 19.6 newtons. 
but the water is creating this upthrust, which I mentioned in the previous slide, which is pushing up with 19.6. Now, if you look here, the 19.6 is equal to the 19.6 down. Therefore, the upthrust is equal to the weight. Therefore, we have something called balance forces. And as a balance force, it's going to float. But also notice is, as I put it in the block, the water slightly goes up here at the side. I do it once more. Look at the edge there, and it goes up. Now, it does go up because what you're going to displace some of the water around the side. Now, a very clever man called Archimedes, he actually realized the weight of the water displaced was equal to the upthrust. So what this does, it displaces water to the side, and it, it creates enough upthrust to balance the wood, hence it floats. Now, if I now take my brick and take this here and drop it, we know the brick is going to sink. Now, the reason why the brick is going to sink is because of this. Now, as I put the brick in, okay, into the water, it starts to create an upthrust as it goes down. And as we've seen the previous, well, demonstration of the experiment you can do, the upthrust increases with depth. Now, remember this brick is 98 newtons going down. Well, as I go down, the upthrust is increasing, 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 increasing. But as I go fully submerged in here, now it's displaced as much water as it can do now, and it's gone up to 49 newtons. But can you see 49 newtons is less, oh, we'll try and put it over here, is less than 98. Therefore, because the 49 newtons is less than the weight of 98, it's going to sink. So I do it again, 98 acting down, the upthrust starts to increase with depth, it gets to a maximum of 49, and therefore it's unbalanced. And this is why the brick sinks. It cannot create enough upthrust, it needs to create 98 newtons for this to happen. And it can't create 98 newtons, hence it's going to sink. And this is the whole principle behind floating sinking. Now, if I go back here, to this, these are sort of diagrams you've got to be able to explain. And you've got here, um, you've got three diagrams, A, B, C, and they can ask you sort of exam questions, um, what is happening A, B, and C? Well, what they've got here in the three diagrams is here's your wood or whatever it is. Oh, there's wood, okay. And this one, you've got your weight acting down here in W. Well, you draw these two arrows, the same length and the size, here we can see the fact that the upthrust is equal to the weight and it's created enough upthrust because that's the depth that is gone down. Therefore, this is going to have here in A, the forces are going to be balanced. Therefore, it's going to float. Now, this one, again, you've got U equal W. You can see the two arrows are equal sizes going again. Therefore, it's going to be balanced force as aimed before. But you can see now the depth has increased. This because this one, the density must be higher than it is in A. Hence, it needs to go deeper to create a bigger upthrust. So the upthrust is equal to the weight. Now in C, now if you look very carefully, this weight arrow is going to be larger than the U. So therefore, the weight is going to be greater than your upthrust. And your weight is greater than the upthrust. This is going to sink. And the reason why it's going to sink is because you have unbalanced forces. And if you've got unbalanced forces, it's going to sink downwards. Therefore, what you've got to start learning to do is using keywords to explain these three different diagrams. So I repeat this one, upthrust equal to the weight. Balance forces is going to float. Again, this time, the upthrust is going to be equal to the weight. But now you have got a bigger depth because the density of the block is going to, well, the wood is going to be higher. And this one here, now you've got your weight is going to equal, it's greater than the upthrust is going to sink. Therefore, this one, it must have the greatest density of all of them because it's going to sink because it can't create enough upthrust. And that's that, but basically like looking the wood here compared to the brick. I know it's not brick, but it's very dense wood, hence it sinks.
So what I've done now for you is I've taken through the last two learning outcomes, which were investigate what factors affect the upthrust of an object and also describe what factors influence floating and sinking. Hope you enjoyed it.